Hello everyone! I've been putting in a lot of hours playing Baldur's Gate 3. And while I absolutely love the game, there are quite a few things that I personally felt it, it didn't explain properly or just went over my head with all the things they throw at you. The game could definitely use tutorial, in my opinion. But thankfully, I did stream the game quite a bit. I learned a lot from the people in the chat. I figured to make a list on things that stood out for me. Throw out some spoiler-free tips for some of my friends that are coming to the game. Maybe it can help you out as well. And if you got any tips to give, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. First tip I give is once you're in the game, open up the options and turn off karmic dice. This is, as far as I understand it, a bad luck protection system. But this is a D&D game after all, and the dice is going to decide your fate. With that in mind, I would recommend, especially for your first playthrough, to not constantly save scum. And save scumming, that's saving the game with hotkey F5, you roll the dice and then reload the game with hotkey F8 if the dice don't land the way that you want to. There are consequences to your choices to how the dice land, and a lot of those consequences, and they won't play out right away. Certain choices that you made in Act 1, they'll play out again in Act 3. Don't worry about following the correct path that you have in mind. You'll have way more fun with fate guiding your hands. You can always get those perfect choices during your second playthrough, or the one after that, or the one after that, or the one after that. You'll be fine, but one tip, if you do have to choose between dialogue options and you're looking to get the dice in your favor, if you hover over the option, it will show you what kind of buffs you're going to get. So for example, uh, charisma or strength or wisdom, it will give you a preview as to how the dice are going to be. Speaking of extra runs, by the way, right out of the gate, the game does offer you a beautiful second playthrough as the Dark Urge, which will offer you quite a different adventure. So once you're done with your first one, make sure to check that one out as well. While adventuring, make sure to sleep often. You don't always have to use resources, but just make sure to sleep. Uh, certain events, certain story moments don't progress unless you sleep. So if you find a moment in the middle of a story, just go to bed a couple of times, make sure that if you sleep, nothing majorly happens, and then carry on your adventure. Inventory management is kind of trash in this game, unfortunately, but knowing some of the hotkeys will definitely make your life a lot easier. If you're like me, then you'll want to be able to pick up every single thing that you come across, because who knows when you're going to need it. Unfortunately, you're not strong enough to carry everything in your backpack. But don't worry, just take those items and send them to your camp. It will pop up in your chest and you can put in whatever you want. There's an unlimited amount of space. At least as far as I know, I, I didn't reach any kind of limits. That way, if you reach a vendor and you want to sell your stuff, you can just pop back to camp, pick up all the stuff and sell it. This chest will also hold your corpses, so necromancers out there, you'll never have to run out of resources. You can sort items by different settings, value, weight, or latest obtained, or other options. Hitting tab will open up the inventory of all of your characters, and you are free to move items across these menus. On the top left, there's a search bar, so say that you need to find your fire or your health potions amongst all the other junk, just type in health and it will pop up. Say that you have found what you want to move around, and it's a lot of it, then make sure to hold down control, and you click on the first item. Then hold shift and click on the last item that you want to pick up. Anything in between, that will now be movable, and it allows you to move entire groups. You can pick up pouches and backpacks in your adventures to put in all your scrolls or potions or arrows or whatever you want to do to make it a little bit cleaner. Now say that you do want to vendor all that you picked up, but you don't want to sell it one at a time. Simply select it again, control, and then with shift, and then hit the option add to wares. This will make an option pop up a button to instantly sell all your wares to the vendor. Now all the vendors are clearly marked. Some of them, like quest givers, they will allow you to trade, but you need to hit the button in the lower left corner. In this corner, you'll also find the option to swap characters mid-dialogue. So while one of them is talking, the others, they can do other stuff. Position themselves, or, you know, pickpocket things, or put things in their place, whatever you want to do really. You can hold shift to see what area is safe to hide in if you're stealthing, and you can also use pickpocketing to take items from your standby allies in your camp. In case that you forgot to remove something from your inventory, instead of having to add them to your party and then take out the items, you can simply pickpocket off their body. So let's talk about combat now. Uh, say that you find yourself missing just a little bit of movement to reach that enemy, then always make sure to jump before you move. If you have trouble finding people in a big pile of enemies to fight, hit the squiggly key next to the number one button to make everybody get a shiny border around them. Say that that is not enough, then use the portraits at the top of the screen to click on whatever you want to hit. 
Enemies that are casting a concentration spell, they'll have a circle on their portraits, making it easier to find who's casting that pesky cloud of darkness. You can also stop casting your own concentration spell by disabling it in the lower left corner. Hold control while clicking to reuse the last weapon used. So if you want to bash something with your sword, just hold down control after swinging it first time. The same goes for your bow after shooting. This makes knocking down doors or breaking treasure chests a whole lot easier. You can move boxes and objects around simply by left clicking on them and dragging them around. You can slide the red bars to adjust your UI, as well as move the spells around any way you like by unlocking it. The K button will open up the menu in which you can prepare your spells, which you can do at any time. I learned this far too late. So say that you have like remove curse, right? Like you don't want to bring remove curse to every single battle, but sometimes remove curse is really handy. Just hit K, prepare remove curse, use it once and take it off the bar again. Wizards can learn spells from scrolls. You can hit the book button to see which scrolls they have in the inventory that they can learn, how much it will cost, and then you can quickly select and learn them. This button right here is a light source button. With one click, you'll swap between your weapon and the torch you got equipped. Don't forget to swap back before getting into combat. Doors are extremely powerful, and so is throwing stuff, from weapons, allies, to enemies off a cliff. You can even throw potions to downed allies instead of pulling them back up, which, if it does land, it gets them up with more health than physically assisting them. But try other stuff, try and see what you can throw around, you can do some really cool stuff. With combat over, you'll eventually level up, and you can actually multi-class in this game by pressing this button. Now you can level up two or three or multiple classes at once, combine different ones, can actually end up with some crazy powerful results. My personal favorite so far, or at least the most overpowered one, would be Warlock Paladin. It's crazy, but I'll link some resources in the description if you want details on some leveling routes. I think, all in all, that's what I would give to anybody new coming into this game. So here's hoping that some of this will help you out. Again, if you got some non-spoiler tips of your own, then by all means, leave them in the comments down below. And until next time, see ya!